Yo guys, what's up? Bonsi Chan here, back at you with another TCGO video. And today we are going back over Umbreon Wob video that I profiled a couple weeks back. Um, this was originally Table Mon's list that he took to League Cup to deal with the meta of Decidueye Volcanian. And um, this is update list with Guardians Rising. Now, you won't see very many changes here. Obviously we have, you can see the, immediately the top of Lele. Um, the core of the deck is still the same. We still run four Eevees with the energy evolution ability from Sun and Moon. We'll also play one Flareon to help us in the Decidueye matchup, two Vaporeons to help us deal with the Volcanium matchup, and then one Jolteon for the, um, for matchups like, for the Decidueye matchup as well against Jolteon. Also pretty good at dealing with Eveltal, and, um, one other card. Um, can help you take out a Talonflame pretty quickly too if you're playing at something like Greninja. And then we also have, we play three Umbreon GX. Um, this is your main attacker of the deck. The strafe, build, the strafe attack is the one you tend, you, gen, you generally like to focus on because it helps you switch in and out of Lob Effect to keep that ability lock under control on your opponent's turn. And then Shadow Bullet is, is, is the next attack you want to use a lot. You gotta really be careful where you hit these Shadow Bullets and make sure that you do your math. You're like, okay, like, you gotta hit, I gotta do Shadow Bullet this many times and hit this Pokemon on the bench. Or, you know, take into the fact, well, they're probably gonna bring out this guy on the bench next turn, off the bench after I knock out their active, so I need to hit something else instead of hitting the thing I've been hitting that way, I don't waste a Shadow Bullet. And then also timing your Dark Call GX to make sure that, you know, you can, you know, either disrupt your opponent heavily enough, or you can maybe install for a, a turn or two um, to help you hit those numbers. Um, you don't want to use Dark Call GX carelessly, you want to use it when it's gonna be most effective. And then we play one copy of Rengaru for the draw. Um, this deck can run low on draw, but also can have tend to have clunky hand sizes. I have considered actually taking this Rengaru. I would actually consider taking this Rengaru out for a second top of Lele, uh, just to make sure we get that supporter. Um, but the second attack is pretty good for three energy. The 60 damage plus 20 more energy times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon could be pretty good against things like Mega Mewtwo, Lugia, Eveltal. Um, any deck that runs has a high uh, attack cost, even qua even Lapras, you hit for 60 against Lapras because they will try to have three energy on there. Even if you can't hit that three energy, you can you know, you know, let's say they have two, you hit 100. Next turn you hit 160. That's 260. That's enough to knock out a Lapras, even though they're probably gonna knock you out back. Um, but you're trading two for one in that situation. Then we play one copy of Shaming Ace for the draw support. We don't want to play multiple Shams in this deck because we don't want to give up easy prizes. Uh, one Tapu Lele. The Tapu Lele is the card that is defining the meta right now. It has the Wonder Tag ability, which lets you, when you play it from your hand onto your bench, you can you get to take a support card from your deck and put it into your hand. And the energy energy drive attack is basically Lugia's aerial aerial ball, but it does not hit for weakness or resistance, which is pretty much the same thing as aerial ball because colors don't usually hit for weakness or resistance. But and then Tapu Cure GX we will never get to use in this deck because we do not play Rainbow Energy or Psychic Energy. And then next up, we have two copies of Wobbuffet from uh, Phantom Forces or Generations. Um, so, this is the one with the Bide Barricade ability. And as long as your active Pokemon, each Pokemon play, hand, and discard pile have no abilities except for Psychic Pokemon. So, the idea with this deck is to strafe into the, use Umbreon Strafe Attack to switch into the Wobbuffet, and then use Float Stone to retreat the Wobbuffet out. Now, this is kind of hampered by the existence of Field Blower. So they could field blow off your field stone, your float stones, but if you do it correctly, you, you can you know usually you know get your opponent stuck out there for a turn. Maybe sh if you're holding the float stone in hand, straight into the lava fat, fat, then play the float stone. You just have to be a little bit smarter now with your tool cards because of field blower. Then one copy of enhanced hammer because of how much special energy is in the format. Enhanced hammer is awesome. Oh, excuse me, guys. Two copies of Field Blower to get rid of our opponent's tools and stadiums. Two copies of Level Ball to grab our EVs and our evolutions. One copy of Super Rider to recycle all of our Pokemon and some of our basic energy. Three copies of three, is it three, yeah, three copies of Trainer's Mail to search out supporters and items. Four copies of Ultra Ball because it's Ultra Ball. Four copies of VS Seeker because it's VS Seeker. Um, two copies of Parallel City. Um, this is really good in our deck because we can limit our bench to discard shamans or anything else that we don't want to get taken out or we can put it the other way towards our opponent and make a uh, decision why do 20 less damage 
make Volcane do 20 less damage, make Lapras do 20 less damage. It all depends upon the matchup and which side you should you should play towards your opponent. Then we play one copy of Lily because we have a uh, top of Lily so we can pull some cheeky things off of Lily. Plus it's a good draw supporter that doesn't require us to discard anything. Uh, two copies of Lysander. Um, nowadays you have to play two copies of Lysander. It's pretty much a given in every deck. Two copies of N for draw support and consistency. One Professor Kukui to help us hit magic numbers. Uh, three copies of uh, Fresh Sycamore because it's the single best draw support in the game. We don't want to play four because we don't play a whole lot of recovery. So playing two main Fresh Sycamores is a bad idea. We only have one form of recovery, which is Super Rod. Then we play two copies of Team Flare Grunt to discard opponent's energy. One top copy of Team Skull Grunt to discard opponent's energy from their hand. Two copies of Float Stone for our Wobbuffets. Four copies of Double Colors energy and seven copies of Basic Dark energy. Now before we get in, actually I'm going to go ahead and talk while I wait for a game and I uh, uh start with the opening turn. Um, this deck is definitely not as potent as it once was. Uh, when I did the original profile of the deck, it was a lot stronger because of how much Decidueye and Volcano is running around. Now that we have Guardians Rising out, the deck has definitely lost in potency because more, either um, I feel like Decidueye has fallen a little bit. Thus making Volcano fall a little bit because Volcano is being played because it's a counter to Decidueye. And then think this deck can struggle against things like Lapras and, and Sylveon because you cannot get those damage numbers that you need against them because they're, they're bulkier. Also, I would like to put room in for Choice Band in here because uh, Choice Band is awesome. But since we're not trying to necessarily one hit, one hit our opponents, um... I felt like Choice Man was not a necessary inclusion, and this guy just concedes. Um, if he didn't concede, he might actually won because we had a pretty bad start. Uh, starting Wobbuffet in this deck is never the greatest. So let's try to find another game here. Uh, this might be one of those videos, guys, where I have to make a cut because um, I do have to go to work soon. So I'm trying, I'm trying to get this video done before I go to work. But um, let's see how this goes. If I can get a couple good quality games in for you guys, it'd be awesome. But I've been having problems getting quality games the last couple days. Um, a lot of people just scooping, conceding. A lot of people just, you know, um, getting, you know, donked pretty early. Um, but let's see what we get here. Um, even though Guardians Rising has been out for almost two weeks now, there's still a lot of experimentation being done on TCGO. Um, definitely after Seattle, that is when that is all going to end because people are going to have, everyone's going to see what everyone played at Seattle and know what to play. Um, but let's see where we're going. It was dark, so this it might be. I think it was pure dark. Okay, so this is this is an Umbreon deck. Okay. Um, I feel fine attaching this double Carlos to the EV right now because if this is um wa uh, Umbreon, the only way he can hit that number the, the, that um 60 damage is with the strafe and. That's pretty much it. Even with Kakui, it's only 50. Choice Band doesn't affect it. So I don't really see a way of... Unless he plays Reverse Valley. That's You would have to have Kakui and Reverse Valley to take this knockout, which he does not have. Uh, we do hit the Dark Energy. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the Energy Evolution ability, though, because I want to um, thin out my deck a little bit. And we're going to go up into our Umbreon. Team Flare Grunt off his Energy. Because we don't really have any other any other move to do, and let's go ahead and shadow bullet. Maybe get a knockout on the other EV, but I highly doubt it. But let's just soften him up a little bit. Okay, so he goes for the he goes for the energy onto his own Umbreon to again do more damage to us. He probably will switch into the EV because it's gonna go down anyway. That would be the correct move. Would be to strafe into the EV. He does not go for the EV, so I'm still taking the knockout while doing more damage to his Umbreon. If he had switched his Umbreon out, I would have only been doing 30 damage to Umbreon and then overkill damage to the to the Eevee. So I felt like our opponent there should have discarded his um he should have switched out into his Eevee. Now what do I do here? Um I don't really want to Ultra Ball for anything. Um, all of our evolutions are kind of dead, but I don't want to discard the Umbreon or the Oranger because the Oranger could come in handy. Um, I don't really want to attach energy anywhere. 
Uh, we have an energy for next. We have the double cutlass. If we do get life standard into our shaman, we can um, use that to sky return. So he is going to shadow bullet us now too. He's going to discard our floatstone, which we expected. Um, I would have done something different if he, our opponent had strafed in and out. I could have, you know, used that, but looks like he's just going to dark call us. Um, so let's see here. What can we do? We need to get an inner, a dark energy somehow onto our Umbreon. I think the move here is actually to grab a Tapu Lele. If we have it, because we haven't searched our deck yet, so we don't really know if we have it. And then we have five dark energy, so we could Tapu Lele. So we're going to Tapu Lele here. Um, I think... Hmm. I don't really need anything else. If we hit this dark energy, we win. So we're going to go ahead and grab a Sycamore. We're going to kind of go for this really aggressive early start here. If we hit a dark energy, we win. And let's see if we hit it. We do not hit the dark energy, unfortunately. Um, so let's go ahead and put down Eevee to maybe get evolution out. And then let's go ahead and parallel ourselves to get rid of our Shaman, because I don't want to give any surprises. Um, yeah, so that kind of sucks. We sh we had five dark energy. We had a pretty high chance of hitting one to get out that um, to get out that dark energy to win this game right here and there. Uh, he's gonna put a poison barb down onto his Umbreon. He puts out an al sun altar of the moon, and he's gonna shadow bullet us again. Again, all we need to hit is this dark energy, and we win. Um. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again, guys. I'm gonna try again. We just have to hit a dark energy. We should hit it now. Yes, there's the dark energy. There we go. That's all we need right there. And we win. Alright, GG. Uh, going for that risky dark energy the first time was kind of risky, but at the same time, I felt like it was kind of worth the risk. We were pretty good in control. We had backups. Um, but, you know, that's cool. Um, yeah, so like I said, guys, this deck does struggle a little bit against things like Sylveon and um, Ninetales because they don't have a weakness to Fire, Water, Dark, or Electric. And also, I've been seeing a lot less Decidueye Plume than I originally saw when, um, up in, from the time that the Decidueye Plume right, rose up, which is about probably, oh, probably about four or six weeks ago, to about this past week was pretty much a bunch of Decidueye, but then this past week I've started seeing less and less Decidueye. Um, I'm not sure that's people just experimenting or if Decidueye is actually falling out of favor. I feel like though Decidueye is falling out of favor just because a lot of the newer decks seem to be a lot more consistent versus um, a lot of the newer decks seem to be a lot more consistent than um, Decidueye Vileplume. Decidueye Vileplume has that, sh has that, that struggle where it either goes off the first turn is amazing, or it fizzles you and you lose and you just lose. Um, so it looks like we might be going against Greninja here, but um, so I think the um losing a lot of favor because of its of its inconsistencies. Uh, we only have one. We have one Umbreon in hand, so one Umbreon is prized. Our Jolteon is prized. Um, our Tapu Lele is prized. That sucks. Uh, looks like we have two Ultra Balls of Prize and one VS Seeker of Prize. So we have everything else available to us. So we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves our Eevee. Oh no, our Jolteon's not Prize. That's in our hand. Oops. Um, I guess I'll take the Sycamore even though I'm not going to play it. Um, since we have, we know one Umbreon is prized, we don't want our Umbreon and our Tapu Lele are prized. Um, I don't feel comfortable discarding that Umbreon just yet because uh, we would be losing another attacker. Um, he's going to Team Flare Grunt us and then Arrow Blitz us.
Um, that was actually a pretty clutch arrow blitz by our opponent. I mean, uh, Team Flare Grant. Um, if we don't draw into like an end or something now, we may have to stick more. Uh, we get the float stone though for a Wobbuffet, so let's just go ahead and stick more. We need to do damage. We need to go on the offensive a little bit here. Um, we need it. We need an N is what we really needed. Um, let's go ahead and strafe. Do we want to? We want to put out the Wobbuffet. I think so. I think so. Just to stop him from doing something cheeky. Um, I'm not exactly sure what he's playing in. He was playing Talonflame, which is indicative of Greninja, but it is not Greninja. He's playing Palkia. He's playing Water Box with Talonflame? How does that even work? How does that work? I don't even know anymore, guys. I don't even know. Um. So I don't un I don't understand what he's playing. So you go ahead and arrow blitz us. Um, we need an N. We really do. He's gotten two arrow blitzes off us, and we haven't been able to do anything off of that. Uh, we do hit a double carless, that is nice. We can go ahead and team flare because we don't really have another option. Um, let's go ahead and limit his bench. Um, we're going to retreat out of here into this. We're not going to be able to get a knockout. But we can soften up that mana fee, take easy prize later. Um, if we do draw a Lysander though, we can take two, we can take three prizes off one attack. He's going to Crushing Hammer us. Hopefully he misses this hammer because we don't have another double colors in our hand. He misses one Crushing Hammer. He's going to VS Seeker. For a Team Flare Runt. That does suck. Gets rid of our Stadium with his Rough Seas. And he's gonna use that to probably charge up his other Palkia. Um, we do not hit a double carless at all. Go ahead and drop this here. Um, Lily for two, I think it's better than second one with two VS Seekers. Uh, we do get an EV. Now we could evolve this EV into a Vaporeon to uh, heal up our own Umbreon, which is something interesting you can do here. Um. I think Dark Calling here is probably the right move. What's the worst he can do next turn? The worst thing he can do next turn is Max Lakeser manually attach to hit us for 120. If he does that, he takes a knock on our Umbreon. If we Dark Call, it means... If we Dark Call the active Palkia, it means he has to attach to his active Palkia and hit two Max Lakesers in order to get that damage off. And then he, even if he doesn't, if he just gets a manual attachment, then we uh, take 40. Um, I think Dark Calling is the right move here. Now, our opponent, or take a knockout here, has to have, nope, he does not. So he had to manual attach to his bench Palkia and get a max elixir off to get the dock out. But he's going to be attaching a lot of energy to his Pokemon now. We can go ahead and play this Vaporeon down, because watch, now watch what happens. We heal ourselves. Uh, we're going to go ahead and VS Seeker out for the Lily. Um, Team Flare Ground has some potential here to screw with him, but at the same time he can just retreat it anyway. Um, Actually, I think Sycamore is the better move here because um, the rest of our hand is kind of dead. But let's go ahead and put energy onto our Umbreon. Let's be and Sycamore away our hand. We do hit a Fuel Blower, so we can get rid of his Stadium now. Um, 
the wob I'm not sure is gonna be a factor in this in this match let's go ahead and take the free knockout on the town flame though just to get a prize card maybe we hit a top of Lele we hit enhanced hammer um, which I'm not sure is gonna come into play this game because I do not think he plays double colorless just based off what we've seen so far I really don't think he plays double colorless energy in his deck so that enhanced hammer is kind of useless uh, he is going to get the, uh, the knockout on our Umbreon because he's going to hit us for 120 damage. <laughs> so let's go ahead and bring out this Wob. Um, we're going to go ahead here and level ball out for an Eevee. Now, if you go, if you guys watched yesterday's video of me talking about selling out community college and not misplaying, you would re remember that I said you retreat the wild effect, play the Eevee, then evolve. <laughs> um, just to make sure you get that energy evolution. Oh, but we don't have an Umbreon in our deck. Oh, oh, oh my God, that was bad. That was bad. That was bad. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Um, play an N. <laughs> I forgot her. I'm being surprised. Oh, uh, we need. Oh, we need a miracle. I don't really want to shame it for two. Oh, wait. We can draw a card off of Eevee. We can't draw a card off of Eevee. Oh. That sucks. Um, he takes it, knock out our Eevee there. Um, let's go ahead and promote the Oranguru, even though it's going to go down for free. Uh, the Field Blower does help a little bit, so let's go ahead and discard that. Uh, we're going to have to shame him for two, because I don't really want to waste that VCE or that Dark Energy on our Oranguru. We need a Super Rod as quickly as possible. Uh, we don't hit the super rod there. Um, I know it's not a prize, so let's see if we can hit off this end here. We can put him down three cards as well. We do hit the super rod, which is awesome. Uh, do we have a level ball left, though, for that search ability? We do. So, um, we're going to go ahead and put one Umbreon back in, one EV. Um,. We have one more Eevee left in the deck, so I guess putting back... Actually, we need to put Dark Energy back. We need to hit Energies on the next hour following turn. And we're just going to let Zeranguru go down. And our Wobbuffet as well. Um, I highly doubt we're going to make a comeback in this game, but I think the main reason why we dug ourselves so deep into a hole was that we could not get it in early to um, stop our opponent from using Talon, abusing Talonflame. Uh, top of the being the prize card definitely did not help. So let's go ahead and promote our, our Vaporeon, because if we promote our Shaman and if we don't get it out of the active, we are going to lose right here. Actually, it doesn't matter, we're going to lose it away. Not to about it. Um, team Skull Rat. Yep, that's game. Alright, let's get another one in, guys. I got time for one more. Good game. Um, okay, so. What the hell is this guy playing? Very dark, psychic, colorless. I still don't know. And our opponent is taking a while to load the game in. He's playing on that potato internet connection. Okay, there we go. So we're on call to flip. We lost it, so our opponent does get to just go first, looks like. I right, go, let's go first. Alright, we give up Mulligan here. Our opponent does too. So he's playing Choice Band, Max Luxury, Fairy Energy, and Dart. Okay. I don't even know, guys. Oh, but we give up another Mulligan. 
which does suck. But so is our opponent. Okay, we haven't seen a single Pokemon yet from our opponents. So I really have no clue this guy's playing. We start with a Wob, which is probably the worst thing I think we, that we can start right now. But we do have a Floatstone, though, to attach. So I guess it's not horrible. We're just going to not play the bench the other Wob either. Um, okay, so he's playing something with Umbreon and Fairy Energy. Maybe he's a Fairy... Maybe Sylveon Umbreon? With Wob? I really don't know. Drampa. Okay, that's kind of uh, tricky to deal with. We're gonna go ahead here and Ultra Ball. Um, we are gonna discard a. Uh, we want to keep the Lily. Let's go ahead and discard this fairy, this dark energy, and this Wobbuffet. Go ahead and grab ourselves an Eevee. Bench the Eevee. Attach the Float Stone. Retreat the Float Stone. Retreat the Wob into the Eevee. Evolve our Eevee into an Umbreon. And then we are going to Lily here for six cards. Uh, trainer's mail. Let's see if we can get a good supporter for next turn. Uh, we have an N and a team flare grunt. Let's go ahead and grab that ultra ball in case we need it. Um, I think we're just going to pass. Yeah. We are just going to pass. And let's see what our opponent does here. He's going to drop down a choice band onto our, his Drampa. And that's going to let him do a pretty good chunk of damage here. He is going to be hitting us for Choice Band gives him 30, 50, 50 on top of his 20. That's 70 damage. Um, a pretty respectable amount of damage on the first turn. Uh, we do have a Field Blower, though, for that Choice Band. Um, so let's go ahead and Field Blower off that Choice Band there. Um... What do we want to Ultra Ball for? Do we want to Ultra Ball for anything? I mean, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, if we Ultra Ball got flat cards, play Splatter. Um, let's go ahead and grab an Eevee, though. That's an easy, that's a pretty straightforward move here. Um, Drampa is weak to fighting, so I do, is weak to farrier, fa fighting. Um, so I don't think we're going to be able to grab anything off of this weakness shenanigans we're playing here. Um, we can Ultra Ball, though. I think we discard our Vaporeon and our Lysander here. And we go ahead and we grab a Shaman. Uh, we're only going to draw three cards off the Shaman, I think. Go ahead and Trainer's Mail. Um, a Kukui is pretty nice, though. We will, I will take that for next turn, possibly. Um, let's go ahead and Team Flare Grunt off that energy, so he can't hit us. He has to attach again to hit us back. And let's go ahead and Shaman up here for three cards. Uh, we do not hit anything useful here. I guess um, getting out an extra um, Umbreon is nice. One is prize, though. And then let's go ahead and strafe into our Wobbuffet to prevent him from setting up or doing anything cheeky. If he does have a field blower though, we are kind of screwed. Um, I feel like this is going to be a long game, though. If he has a field blower, I think he'd play it automatically just, just to spell us. Because we would have to attach a DCE to get rid of get our Wobbuffet out of the active. 
Um, what I, I'm mainly concerned about is uh, Berserk. That is going to hit us for 150 damage. Which is enough to knock out our damaged Umbreon. He just passes. Okay. Um, let's go ahead here and retreat our Wob into our other Umbreon. And we're not going to play N. I don't really feel like comfortable discarding a whole lot of stuff right now. Um, we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing that we did last turn. That's seems pretty effective at stopping him. Um, if we hit a DCE next turn, we can uh, knock out that um, Drampa and put some damage on the backline one. Which does let him uh, bring out his benched one and do some and discard these Evo. And he just scoops. Alright, so I feel like that Wob really maybe just shut him down. I feel like maybe his hand was like Shaman, Energy Evolution Eevees, um, possibly even um, Shamans. So I felt like that Wob really shut him down there, guys. Um, you, so that's the deck, guys. Um, let's go ahead and look at the deck list one more time. And I'll talk about some guys, some further changes I might consider, I would consider making if I were to play this deck. Um, I would definitely keep the Flareon and the Vaporeon. I would drop the Jolteon for a Flareon because there's not a whole lot of stuff that's relevant right now that has a lightning weakness that you can't already deal with. Um, with the Jolteon though, it lets you um, hit, take easy knockouts on a Shaman though with Shadow Bullet, let, so you don't because you hit them for weakness and that's enough to knock it out. But that's kind of unreliable because that means you have to have an Umbreon with a Dark Energy a double, and Double Carless, plus the Jolting on the bench, and the Shaman in the active. This is not the right deck. That is not the right deck. That was an expanded version I was working on. This is the right version, okay. Um, I would consider dropping the Ranguru for a second Tapu Lele though. I would also consider trying to fire up for Choice Band just to get in extra damage because um, there's a lot of things that are hard to two-shot in the meta right now. Because um, we cannot two-shot a Sylveon and we cannot two-shot a, uh, a low in Ninetales. Sylveon we can two-shot if we have one of those is with Kukui. But we have no reliable way of really two-shotting things. Uh, a lot of GXs now have higher HP than previously. And um, a lot of things we cannot hit for weakness because we cannot hit, they don't have a, a, a weakness that we have easily accessible to us or accessible to us at all. Um, but if I were to, to do anything, I would drop maybe um, the float stones we can't drop. So kind of finding room for choice bands in this deck, I feel like is kind of difficult um, just because there's so many cards you can't really cut. You might you could cut the lily. In maybe one sycamore, but I feel like cutting a sycamore and a lily would would cut your draw down way too much in order to get out those choice bands. And I don't feel like doing extra damage for I don't feel like adding extra damage for for less consistent draw is really worth it. Um, but guys, this is, has been Umbreon Wob. We're re revisiting decks that um, were played that we considered before Guardians Rising. Uh, tomorrow we are going to do probably the first new deck of Guardians Rising. We're going to talk about Alola and Ninetales, and then possibly even Sylveon the following day. Um, if not, not Sylveon. If I can't get, feel like I don't feel like I can play the deck well enough to show you guys to showcase Sylveon. I'll start showing you case other uh, another older deck, probably somewhere along the lines of maybe Decidueye or Lapras, depending upon my mood. But let me know what you guys think of that in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out. Affects all abilities. Effects of abilities from non-psychic Pokemon. Therefore, when I attached energy to the Eevee, I couldn't evolve into the Umbreon. Yeah.